Flashback 1, The Western Frontier, 30 years ago. In this historical campaign, you take command of the battalions of the Western Frontier. 30 years ago, when General Herman of the Western Frontier was a young man, Tsar Gorgi of the Tundran Territories launched a preemptive strike against the Western Frontier. The Tsar believed rumors that the Western Frontier had constructed an all-powerful superweapon, an almost identical scenario to that occurring in the present-day Solar Empire. Could the same person be behind both rumors and both wars? Repel the Tundran invaders and secure victory for the frontier. Caught unawares by the Tundran's preemptive strike, the fighting frontier was pressed back into its heartlands. A derelict base in the middle of the desert was the site of their last stand. the big board saw the action, huh? Why did you bring me here, Herman? I'll tell you why, Betty. There's something about this conflict that reminds me of our early hostilities with the Tundra Territories. Back when Tsar Gorgi, Nova's daddy, was still in charge. Welcome to the Western Frontier Flashback Campaign, where General Herman takes a whole three missions to explain what could be summed up in a couple of sentences. Uh, especially considering that the campaign briefing basically told us what this whole campaign is going to imply at the end of the day anyways, but hey, I love the music in these levels, so it's cool. It all started 30 years ago with a surprise attack on 451 our base in the middle of Red Rock Canyon. Yeah, I read all about this in Military Academy. Your famous last stand at Red Rock, right? Uh-huh. The Tundra attack left us low on manpower. So first up, we had to retake the captured barracks. After that, we had to gun for an enemy factory, so we could up our vehicular firepower. We needed those additional vets and armored vehicles to stage the final assault on Gorgie's airbase to the north. The Tundrans were convinced that the Frontier was building some kind of super weapon at Fort 51, weren't they? Yes, ma'am. And it was at the HQ there that we dug in and began the counteroffensive. You know, I have to wonder if the game accounted for the possibility of you playing the level differently from how Herman explains it, but... Oh well. I shot down that ammo dump by accident. It's actually better to just leave it there. So first we have to defend the HQ, and sure enough, here... They send in light tanks first, instead of sending in all of their units at once. So we're going to use our overpowered bazooka veterans to take out these light tanks. Now as you may have guessed from watching that cutscene earlier, the frontier missions are going to be heavy on facilities. Which I like because, you know, they introduce facilities in this game, they should actually start using them. But first we have an HQ to defend. Of course, you could just walk away from the HQ and just let your uh, men handle it themselves. Once the tanks are out of the way, all you have to worry about are a bunch of grunts, and as we'll see, MG nests are all you need to defend against grunts. In fact, based on that one level in the previous game where you had two MG nests... Yeah, anyways, I still like to have fun shooting grunts at point-blank with bazookas. That never gets old, it's just so hilarious, in my opinion, anyways. So that's the last of their grunts, they should be taken out any time now. Yeah, the cutscene should start once they're gone, yep! And of course they couldn't fly in any reinforcements while the HQ was being attacked, they had to wait until it was 
finish defending itself. <laughs> so with that out of the, so with that out of the way, we now have assault veterans and a recon. That constitutes reinforcements, apparently. But the recon is very much appreciated because these barracks up here, they have flame veterans and grunts. So the recon is very useful for taking them out. As soon as it gets here, anyways. Ah, yes. Time to see what fun the recon will bring to us today. Now, when you're now, I'm about to capture these barracks here. As soon as you capture a facility, it'll start making units for you. Oh, and you've got to be careful of the bazooka veteran here. But the thing is, the one thing that I don't like about the w way facilities work in this game is that you'll see that as we start to capture it, even though I wipe out all the units guarding it, it's still go able to respawn enemy units. Uh, until it's captured, obviously. So, this causes a little bit of an issue, because... Because you can see that I'm taking them out easily right here. And, and I'm a total idiot, so I'm going to draw these two light tanks over to me early, even though I really shouldn't. Now, it's taking them a long time to capture the barracks, so I wonder why that is. And then I realize, oh, the enemy respawned a flame veteran, and it started attacking the units, taking the flag. So now that the light tanks are here, I've got to divert the bazooka veterans to take them out. Yada yada yada. So yes, if you get unlucky with enemy respawning units, it can take longer than you might expect to actually capture facilities. I don't like that very much. I also don't like that you are never allowed to choose what units you get from facilities like this. Like this facility right here, it will always add missile veterans to your battalion, but it, it will thankfully respawn any infantry unit. So that's good. But still, I mean, I would want missile veterans in this mission because gunships are about to attack us. That's right, attack us with gunships when we just got anti-air units. Missile unit, anti-air unit. <laughs> I'm still going to call them missile units to avoid confusion with the uh, anti-air vehicle. So, the missiles should take out these gunships pretty easily, and what are those flying in the air? Are those Birds? That's weird, actually. Anyhow, with the gunships out of the way, it's time to take out on the enemy's factory. It respawns light tanks. Now, I I like this even less than the barracks because a light tank is even more dangerous than a little flame veteran. But you know. And of course, when we, t uh, you know, another thing is that. When you capture a facility, you know, I think it would make sense if you gained the unit that the enemy was using the facility to respawn. Like, when we take this factory, you'll notice that it doesn't give us light tanks, it, give us, it gives us artillery units. Good because I like the artillery in this game. Weird because, you know, wouldn't it make kind of more sense if we got the same unit that they just had? you know, take away the enemy's powers... I don't know. I would still prefer to be able to choose what unit you get, because it would be interesting if you had a choice between light tanks and artillery. Both are very, uh, viable units in my opinion. Oh well. The sooner I get to modding this game, the better. But you know, it's not easy to mod a game that you know little to nothing about, as far as internal programming goes. So, these artillery units, they work the same way that they did in Battalion Wars 1, except that when the AI is using them, they're not as good as they used to be. It's due to the AI thing, where if you put them in wait mode, they won't actively attack anything that's in their range, their immediate range, rather. I mean, you can take out these MG towers in one hit with them, and but, you know, since the artillery doesn't um, actively attack anything that's within range while it's in wait mode, you have to actually order it to attack things, or else it won't shoot at anything at all. Since, you know, it's a long-ranged unit, it can't react to anything that gets close to it. I mean, your units aren't completely brain-dead. They won't, like... They won't just let whatever is shooting at them shoot at them until you give the order. But, you know, 
you know, the AI is still not as good in, as it was in the previous game, and I actually think that it needed to be not as good as it was in the previous game, or else, it, or else this would be too easy. I mean, it's already too easy. This is a little harder than what the Solar Empire campaign gave us, but it's still not that hard. And, of course, I'm silly, so I decided to order my Bazooka Veterans at the gunship. I don't know why I did that. Anyhow, the artillery is really useful here because it can hit those enemies that are behind cover. It's very nice. It even does a decent da uh, amount of damage against vehicles. And, if you are extremely lucky, the thing about artillery units is that, and we'll see this in the next mission, when you fire at a moving target, the artillery will sort of aim at where the unit is going, so it has a better shot of hitting its target. It, it's not like the gunships, which kind of shoot at where the enemy was instead of where it was going. It, it, this will make more sense if you actually see it in action. Uh, anyways, if you are extremely lucky, you can actually hit the gunships with artillery shells. Yes! <laughs> that makes total sense, right? Of course, the gunship basically has to be standing still. And of course, the enemy tries to fly in more units, so you shoot them down with the uh, anti-air veteran there. Now, you notice that there's a timer here, but we have like eight, eight minutes left and we're about to capture their air base. Like, they give you 14 minutes. That's way too much time. Look at how fast I finished that. Way too much time. Oh yeah, and I'm not editing in the voice acting for these uh, scenes here because, you know, they're such short scenes that it's completely pointless. I'm sick of putting in the effort for nothing. <laughs> So what will my score be? Ah yes, due to the whole unit respawning thing, it looks as if they respawned a couple of gunships right before the mission ended, so those wound up counting against my power rating. But still, an S rank is an S rank. It's not completely luck based, yet. The frontier had regrouped and was poised to drive the Tundrans back into their borderlands. But reports of unusual activity in the area were giving Herman's men the jitters. Unusual activity? That gives you the jitters? <laughs> I'm starting to think frontier grunts are complete and total wussies. Anyway, this mission is going to introduce the gunship, of course. Which makes sense because we just captured an airbase in the previous mission, so... Makes perfect sense in my opinion. Nice bit of continuity. Commander, the enemy has established any air defenses at the river. We gotta destroy these frigates. Only then will our gunships be clear to take off in assistance. You're gonna need some big guns to sink those boats. Lose these artillery units and the mission's over. A full ground battalion is yours to command. I can't give you gunships till the frigates are destroyed. You know, since those frigates are restricted to the river, you could just fly the gunships around them and, like, completely avoid any chance they have at shooting at you, and... Y you know what, let's just move on. We have three artillery units at the beginning of this level, which is good because there are a bunch of MG towers, and later on, bazooka veterans. I love this. Watch what the artillery shell does to the grunt. Boom! They go flying! That's always so cool and very satisfying. Artilleries are a very satisfying unit to use. Here come some gunships! Now, I have to wonder why they bothered with frigates of all things. I mean, aren't those kind of restricted to the water as I just mentioned? Anti-air vehicles would be a little nicer. Oh no! Bazooka veterans! Good thing we have long-ranged artillery units. <laughs> uh. 
And of course, we have frigates going up a river. <laughs> it's always amused me. Boats going up rivers. Well, actually, does this count as a river? It's more like a moat, really. Because there's a tundra base up ahead. Anyhow, I think the enemy's gunships respawn until the frigates get destroyed. There is a Tundra airbase in the area, so that makes total sense. Of course, they stop eventually, unfortunately. So, what we needed the gunships for is we needed them to destroy these generators in order to bring down an electrified fence. And we couldn't just... Well, I guess this makes sense. I'm trying to poke holes in the mission when there's no holes to poke. Though, couldn't you use... Well, those two generators are, like, right next to the wall, so you couldn't use artillery to shoot at them. You need to actually be able to target the generators anyways. So, here's something that I absolutely love about the three Frontier missions. There are... You know those little tutorials that would interrupt you in the previous missions? Those don't exist in the in the Frontier missions. Like, right now, Herman is telling me about how to control the gunship, but there's no interruption. He's just telling me how it works. It's all very fluent. And, and I can actually learn by doing if I want to ignore his voice. Like, why didn't they do that in the rest of the game? This is Battalion Wars 1 style right here. Also, this little encampment is filled with explosives. I don't know why. It seems rather silly. But this one single mission does its tutorials better than the rest of the game, and that's just... That's, it's amazing that they messed up so many other times, but managed to do it correctly this one time. Actually, I wonder if the artillery could shoot at the two outer generators here. Oh well. Now, there is actually an unused voice clip where Herman congratulates you for winning the mission without destroying the generators, which makes me wonder, A, is that physically possible, and B, did they account for that possibility? Like, well, it doesn't really matter because you can't actually move on in the mission until the generators are destroyed. They won't let you. They'll tell you, no, you've got to destroy the generators and send you back. It's rather silly. I mean, like, if you can do something, I mean, your rank would be abysmal, but... I mean, like, why not? It's going to be extremely hard, but it would make for a nice side challenge. Oh, well. There's a bit of a alternate path here. This rock falls blocking the place, but a little firepower destroys it. And hey! Who do we have here? Are these Exylvanians? Exylvanians. Looks like they're digging for something. Hmm. I wonder what they could be digging for and why they're in the Western Frontier Territory. Anyhow, one thing that I really like is that all this mining equipment is explosive. and even makes the game lag for a fraction of a second when the explosion goes off. Very nice. They've taken prisoners for some reason, but hey, I'm thankful for the assault veterans. I really needed them, even though... I kind of have gunships. Oh well. Anyhow, there are some anti-air towers up ahead. Uh, these are towers, so it's not like the gunship can destroy them. We kind of need our artillery. And I really like that the artillery are remaining useful even after their primary goal has been accomplished. Also, these flame veterans have some weird AI. It seems that if you fire at them without locking on, then they won't actually react to your shots, which is rather strange. Anyhow, they're just flame veterans, so... Oh yeah! Thank you, Herman, for warning me about the flame veterans that I just destroyed. I kind of hate that every time the enemy launches some kind of attack at you, it's completely telegraphed, either by your CO warning you, or the enemy announcing the attack over the radio. And these anti-air veterans? Yeah, the gunship can destroy them easily enough. I mean, I I've obviously taken a lot of damage in the process, but I'm not destroyed, so... What does it matter? So there are some more missile veteran and assault veteran POWs in that camp there. 
and I and my gunship was about to be destroyed, but thankfully the enemy gunships were destroyed and dropped their fuel cans, so yay! And this airbase, capturing it doesn't actually gain you any additional units, but now that it's in our control, our gunships will respawn there, so that's good. Now while the enemy fruitlessly tries to counterattack, I'll destroy these two RPG towers before they can hurt me too bad. Now what have we here? Oh, we have heavy tanks. That sounds threatening. Oh wait, I have gunships and they don't think to throw in any anti-air veterans in their counterattack. These guys out of the way. Is the heavy tank even actually doing any damage? I mean, like, I think it got a direct hit on the artillery, and it didn't destroy it. Oh well, time to move on. There's some more anti-air towers, which... You know, admittedly, we ha uh, the anti-air towers there force us to hold back a little bit, and then wait for the artillery to shoot them out. Which is... Kind of bad level design, because you have to sit there and wait, but, you know... No problem, we can still... Oops! <laughs> Don't want to order the gunship to attack the anti-air tower, that would be just silly. So, in this next area, we have four T-copters that are about to fly away and escape if we don't destroy them quick enough. Hmm, I wonder what that kind of scenario reminds me of. Of course, all of the T-copters are bunched up in this little airport here instead of, you know, being spread throughout the level. But still, Tundra T-copters, that reminds me of something. I can't quite put my finger on it. Anyhow, these T-copters take the same amount of damage no whether they're flying or not, so, so it really only takes the eight missile veterans to destroy them from exceptionally long range. Now, the gold star marks the T-copter that will start its takeoff routine if you don't destroy it fast enough. And I almost lose the mission because I order my troops to attack the unit that is not marked by a gold star and I lost one of my gunships, but that's okay. So, uh... There are heavy tanks. Those are a fair threat. Uh-oh, one of the copters is about to fly away. But, of course, eight missile veterans. That takes them out fairly quickly, and I just have to get rid of this next one when the mission's over. Although I have to admit, the dialogue for this level was rather amusing. What do you mean, comrade? I am only transporting turnip juice to my troops on the front line. <laughs> that was a pretty choice line. The dialogue is always amusing. That's one thing I have to give the game credit for, no matter how bad the rest of the game is. Of course, I missed uh, I missed one heavy tank, so it's not going to be a perfect score, but that's okay. Next up is my favorite level in the game. Look forward to that.